All right, it's time for math. You are going to need your math journal and a pencil and your math notebook or some paper where you can write down the math warm-up that I'm going to show you. Now, I'm about to show you my screen, which will have the math warm-up, and I'm going to teach you a lesson on my screen because our lesson today is all about clocks, and I do not have the kind of clock that I need to be able to show you for our lesson today here at home. So I'll be using my screen to show you that. Get those three things and let's get started. So adding three numbers together. So in your math notebook, will you please write down this number sentence? Two plus three plus five equals. And then go ahead and solve that problem. Remember, you can choose any two numbers that you want to add first. Here comes the next math warm-up problem. It says 7 plus 4 plus 3 equals blank. We're adding three numbers. What two numbers would you add first? Would you add numbers that could help you make a double? Or would you add numbers that would help you make 10? You decide. Write it down in your math notebook. The third and final math warm-up problem says 6 plus 2 plus 5 equals blank. Remember, think about which two numbers make the most sense to add first. It's up to you. And then write down the number sentence and your answer in your math notebook. Okay, today's math lesson is all about time and clocks. Before we jump into our lesson, I want you to make sure you have your math notebook out still or whatever paper you're using. And I want you to open to a clean page where you can make a list. The list that we're making today is going to show things that would take one minute to complete. Now I'm gonna start this timer and it's going to show us how long a minute is. I'm gonna keep talking though because I um, want to help you come up with a list of things that might take one whole minute to do. One example that I was thinking is that when we are at school, it probably takes us one minute to line up quickly and walk up the stairs to PE. If you think about that amount of time to get on the star line, get quiet, and walk up to PE, that's about a minute long. We could walk probably to recess in a minute too, uh, going down the stairs to the playground. We could probably also sing the alphabet three times in a minute. I'll stop there, but I want you to think of a list of things that you could do in one minute. So that whole time I was talking, the timer was running and you could see it just went off. Pause the video and make that list start it up again when you're ready to move on. Okay, so we know a minute is 60 seconds long. Now on a clock that looks like this, this is an analog clock, the minute hand is this long hand. The long hand actually touches the numbers, right? The short hand is the hour hand. It does not actually touch the numbers, and it moves a lot slower than the minute hand. So the minute hand is the longer one, and it will tick 
from one minute to the next minute. Every time a minute happens on the clock, the minute hand ticks to the next minute. Remember, it takes 60 seconds for this minute hand to move from one stop to the next stop. 60 whole seconds, just like we ran on that timer. That's how long it takes for the minute hand to move from one stop to the next stop. Now, we've been working with clocks like this kind of all year long. First, we started learning about how hands move on the clock. We said the hands only go one direction, so they only go clockwise. I'm trying to grab this here and it's not letting me. Okay, I'll grab this. They only go one direction. They only go clockwise. So that hand can only move one way. It's this way. And this hand can only move one way. It's the same way. We also learned that this is the hour hand, that's the short one, this is the minute hand, that's the long one. And we learned that a lot of times the hour hand doesn't exactly land pointing at a number, right? Like sometimes if this hand, the minute hand, has moved around to a different part of the clock, the hour hand will show up somewhere in between two numbers. That's because the minute hand has moved halfway around the clock. The hour hand is going to show halfway between these two numbers, between three and four. This clock actually shows the time 3.30. Now, I'm going to introduce you to the other kind of clock today. Like I said, this is an analog clock. That's this a clock that's a circle that has all those numbers on it. The other kind of clock is called a digital clock. Now the cool thing about what I'm showing you here on my screen is that I can flip from analog to digital really fast by clicking a button. Boop, there we go. Remember how I told you that that time showed 3.30. Well, this digital clock is showing that too. So this digital clock says 3.30. And I just want to point out a couple of things as we learn about digital clocks. First of all, the hour is always going to be in the front. There's a little um, two dot mark right here called a colon. That's how we write time. We write the hour, and then a colon, and then the minutes. Remember when we looked at this analog clock, we said the um, minute hand was halfway around the clock. So that shows, so, or so that means that the hour hand will be halfway between three and four. We could say half past three, or 3.30. They both mean the same thing. 3 is the hour, so it goes in front of the colon. Then we have the colon. Then we have the minutes. The minutes can go anywhere from 0 all the way up to 59. And then the hour will change and the minutes will go back to 0. Let me show you another time on this clock. Let's say that the clock was right at 5 o'clock. That means the minute hand is pointing straight up. That's kind of like saying a new hour is beginning. We're pointing straight up. But what is that hour? Well, let's look at the hour hand. I see the hour hand is showing right at the 5. If we click on the digital clock, cool, it shows us the hour is right at 5, and we have our colon. Then, since it's starting a brand new hour, we have 0, 0 right here. Notice how this is pointing to the 12, but this doesn't say 5, 12. That's a different time entirely. 
that's something that we'll continue to learn. But that's why I said this hour hand, sorry, this minute hand when it points straight up, it's like saying, hey, it's a brand new hour. Therefore, we start at zero, zero. All right, so what you need to know for today is that this is the minute hand on a clock. This is an analog clock. This is a digital clock. And on a digital clock, we show hour, colon, minutes. Those are the things you'll need to remember today. The last thing we need to do in math is a page in our math journal. You're going to get out your journal and open up to page 151. It's the math boxes for lesson 7-9. That was actually a lesson we did a couple of days ago. All right, in your math boxes, number one says, Jake and Rosie are playing base 10 exchange. Now that's a game that we are not able to play because we're not in the classroom and you don't have partners and you don't have base 10 blocks. So that's a game that I haven't taught you, but you can still solve this problem. It says circle the blocks that need to be exchanged. You know how to exchange. We've worked with base 10 blocks for months now. You know that when you have more than 10 cubes, more than 10 ones, those should be exchanged for one long. Can you find a place that shows more than 10 cubes and circle just 10 of those cubes? They're asking, circle the blocks that need to be exchanged. Well, 10 of these need to be exchanged. Don't circle more than 10 though, just circle 10. Number two says, write the time. We worked with time today, so you should be able to read that hour hand. Number three says, use longs and cubes to show 73. Number four says, Lucy skips for two blocks, runs for six blocks, and walks for five blocks. How many blocks did she travel in all? This is a number sentence with three numbers, three add-ins, right? We just did that in our warm-up today. Your job is to only fill in the bubble next to one of those answers. Number five says, a barn has four goats, seven cows, and four pigs. How many animals are in the barn? Again, here is your number sentence with three add-ins. Add those together and put your sum on the line. It's asking you for a unit. What is the thing that we're adding together? We're not adding, we're not going to write goats, cows, and pigs. We're writing one word that describes all of those. And you can spell it right too because it's on your page. And number six says add. Remember, it doesn't matter where the equal sign is. You can still add the numbers no matter what order they're in or what side of the equal side they're on. Add those numbers and then it says a unit over here. Well, this is one of those situations where they did not give us a unit. We just have to make one up on our own. All right. Work on page 151, take a picture of it, and post it in Seesaw. Remember, you also need to post a picture of the things that take a minute list that you wrote down in our math lesson earlier, and you're going to need to post a picture of that. That was on the assignment sheet for today. So two things for math. One is the list of things that take a minute, and the second one is page 151 in your math journal. See you tomorrow.